Welcome back. We're gonna be doing a brush back hairstyle today on my buddy, Austin. Um, so some of the things we're looking at for this style, uh, we want it to be easily brushed back. Uh, I'm seeing quite a bit of weight from the grow out. This is probably about three months. Um, so this is just coming down really heavy here. We definitely wanna shrink that up. Um, he's looking for something that's a little more connected and easier to style. So we'll be bringing this up, leaving it a little bit in the front disconnected, but a little more connected back towards the back here. I'm gonna be doing some graduation on the sides. Um, so essentially what that means is we'll be going a little longer up here to shorter down in this area, but not too tight. Um, I wanna leave enough so it still looks like a fuller brush back hairstyle. In the back here, I did layer it last time and you can see there's quite a bit of weight that grew out in these areas. The head shape is pretty flat, so my hypothesis is that by cutting it square and not pushing into the next section at all, I created a little more weight than I would like. So my plan is to graduate that this time to take off a little more weight in this area, but still leave the nape long enough so it can flick out. Uh, and again, maintain that appearance of a longer brush back hairstyle. I'm gonna add a taper at the end, do up the beard real nice, and that'll be it. Some of the things I'm looking at when I'm starting the cut are just the natural fall of the head. Um, so you can see back around the crown right here is determining where a lot of this hair is falling. We also have this natural split through this part here. Uh, it's not quite center, it's a little offset, but that's something we'll keep in consideration throughout the cut. So we're gonna wet it down, section it out, and we'll go from there. Who made that? Uh, Logan, our social girl. So now that the hair is wet down, I'm just checking through to see some of the things I was visualizing when it was dry. So you can see if you pull a section here, we do have a heavy corner here that was leading to a lot of that weight we saw sitting. There's also a lot of length from the top that was a little more disconnected last time from underneath here. So that's leading to a lot of the heavy weight we saw sitting there as well. So we'll probably end up getting a decent bit shorter on top um, just to give us something that has a little more volume that can move around a little bit more uh, instead of sitting so flat. The hair is a little bit more like fine. So I find that when there's a lot of that, it just tends to hang a little bit lifeless. No hate. So we'll probably go with something it's a little bit more round in through here and then turns round layer into kind of square throughout here and then meeting our graduation in the back, something that just flows back easily, um, that can be styled back easily on the sides as well. So we'll start with our sectioning. I'm basically gonna do more of a classic like horseshoe section on this. I'm just trying to separate the top and the sides. Um, with the graduation, I'll start in the front, work my way through the back. So we really just wanna remove this part from the equation until we're done with that. And then we can come back to it after. I'm gonna take center section and just see where the top of the head is, the very top of it, the apex, and see if that is in line with where that natural fall was earlier. So you can see the top of his head, the highest point is right around this area. In this case, the natural fall was more back here. So I'm gonna choose not to section off in that area. Uh, I'm gonna go back more back towards the crown just because that's where I saw it falling. That's where I saw that transition point. So I'm gonna override that. And this stuff is all coming forward. I'll bring that over to the other side. Separate that section off. And this is coming forward as well. And then I'll just check from the top visually to see if I have something that's relatively symmetrical. Um, and then I'm gonna pull this forward. And what I wanna find here is my recession area. So where this hair starts to split, you can just comb it all forward. And with a lot of length like this, you should just start to see where it wants to split, which is right around there. I'll pull that down. Do the same on the other side. Comb that forward, see where it's splitting right about this area and we'll groom that into the top. And then I'll pull that all into this section. Just try and get as much tension as I can so it stays up there. Give him a nice little ponytail on top. 
So now I'm gonna set in my first length. Uh, this is definitely important because it will determine the length for most of the cut. So there's some shorter lengths under here. That's just from the taper we did last time. Uh, they are a bit disconnected. So I'm not gonna base the first length off of that just because that'll be coming off anyway. So I'm just gonna take a look at the length there, compare it to some of my lengths in the back. And again, I'm okay with losing a good bit of that because I did wanna take off the corner. I'm gonna choose to sit in my first length right about there and take off about an inch and a quarter. Sit in the first length there. Then this is gonna serve as my traveling guide as I go around the head. Uh, and I'm looking at this head shape here. There's only like a small area before it starts to round and where I will start to just over direct some back um, to preserve some of that length. Because if I were to just keep flat against the head the entire time, I'm gonna lose a little more length than I wanna lose. So I'll pull the next section. I'll have these two meet in the middle. I'm gonna comb from the top Check my guide underneath, right about there. You see the guide, and then cut. Then I'll keep working these sections, diagonal back sections back through the head. Take it in the next section again. This will be my last section before it starts to round a little bit. So I'm just meeting in the middle with the two, checking the guide underneath there and cutting. As I get back behind the ear, specifically more in this area, I will start to angle out a little bit so I can maintain more of that length down there. Because as we said, we, wanna, we want to leave more of a natural look. We're not going for anything super tapered. At this point, the head is starting to round here. You can see the comb coming off of the head. So at this point, I am gonna start to pull the section into the previous one. So I can start to build a, a little bit of length as I go back through. See my guide. Cut. And then I don't have a guide there because I did not cut this yet behind the ear. But just being cautious about that length. I can always come back in after and take more of that off. So I'll just angle my fingers out just a little bit to maintain more of that. You can see that flows back nicely. And I'm just gonna keep going until I reach this other side of the head. Uh, about this festival's called See Here Now. So it's like, I saw something- That was like, like on purpose? What do you mean? We'll sit, should either come to Philly or like we'll do like a screen share. That's sick. Yeah, they're gonna go on Philly. They're on blanks and shit. Yeah, blanks the first yeah. one. And it's like kind of part of it. They're, yeah, they're gonna like, you know, map. All right, so one of the things you wanna focus on with graduation is just moving the head around as well. So depending on where my section's at and where I'm cutting, I'm gonna be taking steps throughout to match that section. That way I'm not accidentally pulling too far one way or the other. So if I was here, I'd be here cutting, yada, yada, yada. Then if I'm stepping here, cutting, and then as I get to the back, I'll tilt his down, head down a little bit more, take another step. And I always just wanna be parallel to where my section is. So in this case, I'd be pulling straight towards my belly here. You can see we're starting to get a nice shape throughout here. See that'll brush back real nicely. And we've eliminated a lot of that weight that was sitting super heavy on the corner there, but still have this length to float out a little more naturally. So now that I got past that halfway point at the crown, I'm done with this side. So important thing here as we're transitioning from the side is matching from what we did on the other side. Uh, it's very hard to do exactly. Um, but one trick you can do is checking where that first section kind of sits at. So we'll take this section and just pull it out and measure how many dots it takes up on this YS Park comb free advertisement. One, two, three, four, five. So five there. If I go back to the bottom, it should be relatively similar, a little shorter. Four. Okay. We'll take a section from a similar area here and pull that out. 
see we're at one, two, three, four, five. Right about this point. I'll cut that as a guide. Try maintaining like the same shape as I did on the other side and cut that first guide in. We're at one, two, three. Just about five, that's good. And here, three, close to four. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take to the next section and just repeating the same process on the other side. His head is pretty symmetrical on both sides. So this section is gonna come in to the previous. There's my guide underneath and I'll take that, that much. See the guide. And one thing I'm trying to pay attention to is just looking at the root and seeing if I'm pulling off the base of the head. That's just important for having it sit a little more naturally. Uh, that's the natural fall that we're talking about. If I'm pulling something direct against the direction it wants to go with a lot of tension, it's just gonna snap back, right? So trying to keep that into consideration when I'm cutting the way the hair is naturally falling. And you can kind of see that with the roots. You can try this, seeing if the hair kind of springs back into place that would tell us that we're like over directing a lot. There you go, just sitting right on that finger. Um, that would be considered the natural fall. And then I'm just repeating what I am, uh, what I did on the other side. So anything that's a little more towards the bottom, I'm gonna angle out just a little bit so I can maintain a little bit more of that length that I can clean up at the end if I want. I was supposed to go out there. I'm still seeing the concert, but I'm going out there to see a concert. It's thing to consider when working on the other side of the head, um, it's more difficult depending on what hand you are. Since I'm a righty, it's a lot harder for me to control this way and rounding the head as opposed to working like this. So this, more awkward with my elbow as opposed to this. Yeah. You like making them when you want to. Yeah, at least now, not be fun. For yeah, that's very possible. I think that happens a lot. Yeah. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold up. So I finished the scissor work uh, on the back again. I'm just checking, feeling through these lengths and making sure they're relatively like similar where I want them, and they are. So that is a good thing. I'm just gonna take off a little bit of this edge, um, just to even out the hairline a little bit. So I use a feather razor and just pull the hair straight down. And I'm just gonna dust the end slightly. Just for something a little more filled out. And I can come back in and adjust a little more as it's dry if I wanna do any texturizing or anything like that. So I'm letting the top down now and I'm just gonna check where the top is relative to that back length that we created. So I can kind of determine if we still wanna go with that same choice of length on the top. I can see my shortest length there and I need to somehow get to the front here. Seeing what type of shape I could create to get that. If I were to go completely square, I would have something like that. That's probably a little shorter than I wanna go. So I'm gonna go over something a little more triangular. And then if we wanna take any more off the bank to the end, we can do that with the razor. So I'll use this center profile to kind of cut in that first length and then that'll travel through the rest of the head. I'm using my comb here to feel, as a lever basically to feel the shape of the head. So since I wanna go something a little short and long, it's gonna be a little more rounder. I'm pull like that. And I wanna be careful not to grab too much hair at once because it just gets to be a little overwhelming, gets in the way of what you're trying to cut. I'm just cutting right over the top on my fingers here and using that guide from the back to go to the front. I'm going to take this a little more square because after checking the length in the front, um, it's a little longer than I want it to be. So the beauty of keeping it longer, I can go back and adjust that length to not be as long. 
and then I'll pull that vertical section over to the side and start working towards the front. We'll take a horizontal section and using that comb and pulling up. And then I'm gonna cut a little rounder here, getting a little shorter towards the edge, just so I have something that's a little more connected in the back here. So I can take a little bit from that section into the front and then we'll have a guide from the back here and a guide from the side. Are you in any other videos on the internet? Me? Yeah. With clothes? I don't know, man. In general. <laughs> in general? Do you have an OnlyFans? <laughs> Is that what's not? Oh, uh, Dear Ann? No, it's like a... That's like, like his rendition on Stan. There's like a... Right, so now that I cut that side, just talk through what we we're trying to accomplish again. So you can see the back here is a little more connected than previous, just so it doesn't have as much weight. Um, I still wanted to maintain a little bit more through the front. Uh, and I am going to come in with the feather razor a little bit here, just so if it falls naturally, it can kind of pop up around the eyebrow. I'll take that vertical section and just transition that so I can use it on the other side. I'll take my horizontal and just see my guide on the other side right there. Do you know that? Uh, <laughs> I'm <stop it. laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna put a little bit of sea salt spray in beforehand to give it a little bit of grit. Um, I don't want anything to weigh it down too much. Um, if I put too much product in the hair, it's just gonna become a lot harder to deal with. So we'll just take some sea salt spray and work it in to the hair. Not too much. Um, you wanna be careful not to dry it out too much with this. So it's not super wet right now. If it was super wet, I would blow dry it a little more rough to about like 80% dry before I start using this more concentrated one. But again, not crazy wet. So I'm gonna start with this. About two for speed if you use a Dyson and like medium heat. These get super hot. So I never put it on full heat because you'll just burn your client's head. I've done it before. And then on the top, we'll just work kind of section by section, starting back here. So sides, then crown, then top. And I like to use this motion just to dry the hair out a little more, um, as opposed to just going on top. This will make it lay super flat, which is okay for the crown. I'm not pulling with like crazy tension to get a lot of volume into it. I'm just kind of lifting it up a little bit to get underneath at the root and dry that out. Once that's dry, take another subsection. Just to get a slight bit more volume at the front of the hair, I'm just gonna pull that towards me. A little harder with this brush, but just getting some tension and blowing at the root. And coming up and just getting that little bounce that I can then go back and play with later. The fading process. Um, what I'm looking at here, like I really don't want to dig up into this length because if I do, it's going to be super hard to fade. So this is really what I have to work with. Uh, I can use a little bit of clipper over cone to connect this area, but I want to keep it pretty low um, and have the darkness kind of around this bit here. So I'm just going to go on with a three. I like to basically make it easier to see what I'm working on. So I'm just going to clear some area out and go from there. Just get it with a zero. And with my 1.5 closed, straight into it. And then as I open up, I'm gonna flick out a little more. Try and keep that pretty soft so I'm not digging in. I'm gonna come in with my 0.5. Close about half an inch. Just flick that up. Take my wand right in there. 
I'm just coming back in and cornering anything that looks a little too dark. Uh, I'm not going straight in because I don't, again, I don't want to push it up a lot. I'm just trying to be careful, use my corners so I can keep this low. And now that the hair's a little shorter and define the hairline here. So staying real tight over the ear, using the corner of my blade, clearing that out. Then I can go up a little bit into the hair. Just, you can see this stuff is hanging underneath. It's still a little shorter. So I can clear that out. And on the front hairline, knock it down a little bit. Just so I have something that's a little sharper to line up. And I'm not digging in too much. I'm keeping it pretty natural. Uh, one thing I'd like to look at is just like what what are the tendencies of my client? Like how often are they coming in? Are they wanting something that's like crazy, crazy sharp? Or is it something that they want to like grow in and last? And anywhere we want to create a little more separation or if it's looking heavy, I could choose this area right here um, and just kind of dust through with this feather razor, breaking up any areas that feel too heavy. I'd usually use it on the hairline, but it's already pretty wispy. So I'm just going to leave that and focus more on the internal shape to remove a little bit of weight. We had mentioned earlier in the haircut, where is this top of the hair sitting? So I'll take a section that's parallel to the hairline. I'm fine with where all this stuff is at and I can just pull this down. I'm just going to take a little bit more off. Just so if it falls down in the face, it's just soft, it's face framing. <laughs> I'm like slow <laughs> oh. We got so finish it off. Doesn't need a ton, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of matte clay in. Um, style it up, and then we'll be good. I always like to emulsify it and then add a little bit of water in the hair. Or sorry, not to the hair, to the hand and the product because uh, it helps to activate it. And I'm just going to work it through more in the roots just to give it a light hold. Something that's pretty natural, not super like greasy or anything like that. All right, so to recap, um, we did a graduated haircut, kind of this mid part, like brush back style, um, but still something that's mid length that is still full in the back. Uh, we were really heavy throughout this area and up here, you can see we removed a lot of that corner and that weight. So we have it sitting a lot nicer. Still filling out this space of the round of the head enough because we overdirected. And then these hairs up here that previously were sitting very heavy from the top are able to rest on top of that weight. And then we just have very slight disconnection towards the front some separation that can sit nicely. Still maintaining in the back some of these flicks and basically a perimeter uh, that we think of when we think of you know mid-length or longer hair just being able to see a little bit from the back video yeah yeah definitely we probably do want the airbnb that would be helpful awesome look at me oh fuck yeah dude.